you and I and everyone else who struggles with mental illness know that living with mental illness adds an extra dimension of heaviness to our lives. That weight is oftentimes an unbearable burden and it's always a struggle. And let's say you suffer from mental illness and on top of that, you're black in modern day America. Does the fact you're black add an even greater burden to the one you're already struggling with? Do black Americans who struggle with mental illness get the same kind of help as white Americans? Here to talk more about this difficult topic is Matthew Landwood. Matthew, or Matt Landwood, is a young healthcare worker who lives on Long Island outside New York City. He loves traveling writing, music, and learning about different cultures. So, hi Matthew, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking your time to talk to me. First, I want to start with your grandparents. Who were your grandparents? What was it like for them being black in America in their time? And do you know if they struggled with mental illness? My grandfather was deceased before I was born. My grandma Angela was a single mom raising four children. She struggled with anxiety and later developed depression as a result of losing her youngest son in a house fire. The depression then led to alcoholism. She struggled in her work field and felt she was passed up on many times for promotions due to her being African American. She unfortunately passed away seven years ago of multi-organ failure. Please tell us about your parents. Did they struggle or do they still struggle with mental health? My mom suffers from depression, but that's under control. My father, unfortunately, however, has anxiety. He has anxiety, especially while driving. He will avoid major highways and avoids driving as much as he can. He's been struggling with depression since the passing of his mother. Please tell us about your childhood. How was it? I was raised by my single white mother. When you see a little kid, you don't think race will be on their mind 24 seven. But for me, it was. I felt I was always looked at different from my mother's family. Birthdays, Christmases, and other special occasions, my brother and I would get the cheap dollar store gifts, while my white cousins got the nice gifts. I was also the butt of many racial comments that brought my self-esteem down as a black man. This made me very uncomfortable in my own skin. I didn't have any positive role models to turn to. Please tell us when you started to struggle with mental health and what help were you given? Since the start of preschool, I feel I struggled with mental health. I had bad separation anxiety of leaving my mother. She would have to volunteer at my schools for me to stay there. She did this, and I still wanted to stay by her side in the classrooms. At that time, I don't think my mom or myself knew that this would lead to my lifelong struggle with mental health. Many things throughout the school bothered me. However, when I reached junior high is when I started being bullied and the issue started being unbearable. This is when my mom took me to the psych doctors and they misdiagnosed me with bipolar and started me on lithium. It all went downhill fast from there. What have been your biggest challenges being a young black man struggling with mental health? My biggest challenge being a young black man is being comfortable in my own skin and not letting others' opinions become valid in my head. Knowing that I am more than what society sees me as, and knowing that I am not going to fall prey to what society labels black men to be. I do not steal. I do not have to have my pants sagging. I do not have to fall to this label that I will never accomplish anything because that's what you think because the color of my skin. I can go to school. I can be successful. I like watermelon. I like all foods that are prominent in black culture, 
But is that because I'm black? No. I will not fall prey to what people think I should be because of the color of my skin. Do you believe white Americans are given better help if they struggle with mental health than black Americans are given? I feel that the mental health system in general is just broken. I wouldn't say that it necessarily is because of race. There are millions of Americans of all races and all walks of life that have been let down with all aspects of mental health. I will say money can definitely buy you better treatment than your average middle to lower class person can afford. I see on shows like Dr. Phil, these people who go away to these mental health clinics and they say it helped them. I wish I was given that opportunity to see if maybe there is hope for me. Not just me, but maybe there is hope for millions. I am so tired and so sick and mentally drained of these doctors telling me, the patient, that they have to find the right cocktail for me. I have been getting told this since I'm 12 years old, that they cannot find the right medications for me. How am I expected to prosper if I cannot be given the tools to prosper? How am I expected to live a life that is full of excitement and happiness and hope? How? What do you wish for future generations of people of color who struggle with mental health? My wish for future generations, for people of color that struggle with mental health, is that they know their worth, know that they could achieve anything that they put their mind to, that they will get the help that they desperately need and deserve, that they don't just suffer in silence, that they don't just become a statistic or just another crazy black man or woman, that they can truly live their life with enjoyment, not just exist. I want positive mental health for all people, which I know is not a reality, but we could be doing so much better than what we are doing. We could just be on a whole nother level. Mental health is the crack of our foundation in so many ways. It trickles down in so many other tragedies that have happened in this country and around the world especially in the black community. I just want what's best. And I feel like if there were more doctors who truly took the time to understand the patients and really just, I hate to say it, but cared, it would just be such a different outcome. Thank you so much for that, Matt. Subscribe to my channel for more interviews. The next one comes in five weeks. If you want me to interview you, just send me an email to edvinpalmer at yahoo.com. Next Friday, I'll be back with a new video in my series on intellectual giftedness. Till then, I only want to say three things. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and bye for now.